Ezra chapter 4. Now when the adversaries, the enemy, opposition, of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of the captivity, now that's the name Judah's got now, children of the captivity, not the people of Israel, not the people of God, captivity, built the temple of the Lord God of Israel. So news gets out, the temple is being built. Then came to Zerubbabel and to the chief fathers, and said unto them, Let us build with it with you. We seek your God, as ye do. And we do sacrifice unto him since the days of Esher Hedda, king of Esher, which brought us in hither. They're trying to infiltrate. They're trying to get an ecumenical union here. They're trying to, and if you look at it today, with Israel now, it, you're trying to get outsiders of the children of Israel, their temple, trying to get the Gentiles in. And all they're going to do is mess it up and try. They don't want to build. They don't want to meet God. Their purpose is to destroy and not finish. And this is the same thing when the church today wants to build something and they let the world come in. And the thing is, today is opposition here. The enemy comes to the Jews say, we want to build with you. Today, the church goes to the world and says, come join us. Come take part with us. What an opposition. But Zerubbabel and Jeshua, that's the high priest, Joshua, and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto them, Ye have nothing to do with us to build a house unto our God, but we ourselves together will build unto the Lord God of Israel, as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, has commanded us. All right, no, you're not going to join. We're not going to allow you the enemy. No. And we're going to do the work. And so you don't have any problems with that. The work has been authorized by Cyrus, the king of Persia. Shut up and leave us alone. We got the permits. We got everything licensed and ready to go. We have been approved. And you don't see anywhere in the Bible building program. Matter of fact, you don't even see the word program in the Bible. It's a building. And they of the Jews are doing their own building for God. No outside help. Then the people of the land weakened. That's the first time that word shows up. The hands of the people and of Judah and troubled them in building. Sabotage. Now, trouble shows up 110 times in the Bible. Trouble shows up 68 times. They're sabotaging. They're maybe stealing the tool. They're doing whatever they can to stop, to halt, to delay the building of this temple. You won't let us be part of it, though you don't want to be part of it. And, the, and as soon as you want to do something for the Lord, as soon as you want to build for the Lord... You better know that Satan's going to come along with his people. And they're going to try to stop you. And I'm not talking about just wood, windows, and doors. I'm talking about any work that God has you to do, as he has Ezra to build his temple. Satan and his enemy are going to come up, and they're going to try to trouble you. They're going to try to weaken your hands. And sometimes Satan will use other Christians to defeat the purpose and try to get you to quit. And hired counselors against them. So they can't do it. So they go out and hire people to go against the work. Police officers are hired. So when you get somebody in a public ministry, whatever it be, they're going to use the hired police officers to fight you. And then they'll get the hired lawyers to go against you. Then they'll get the hired judges to go against you. They're going to try everything they can to defeat your purpose. We as a family and our ministry, they have hired a DJ music to try to prevent us from uplifting the gospel louder than what my voice can do. And that's weakening and that's troubled and we still preach the word of God and it's even been more of a blessing. And the world don't like that. 
So they hired counsel to get them to frustrate. That's the first time that word shows up. We're going to see a lot of first time words in this chapter. To frustrate the purpose. And you going to find the world marvel not the world hates you. You're going to find Christians are going to come in and their sole purpose is going to be to frustrate you. That's sorry way it is, but that's what the Bible says. All the days of Cyrus, king of Persia, even unto the reign of Darius, the king of Persia. So it's a long time. And the reign of Adherses, that's the king in Esther. In the beginning of his reign, broke day unto him a accusation. That's the first time that word shows up. Against the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem. They're trying to defame the Jews now. And they're going to write letters against you. They're going to put documents against you. Be not uh, that's what I'm trying to say. Think of the Bible word. I, I can't think of it right now. Be aware that if you're going to enter into the work of the Lord, marvel not. That's what I'm saying. Marvel not that if people are going to write things against you. Marvel not if they're going to frustrate you. Marvel not they're going to weaken your hand. Marvel not they're going to try to join you. And not for the purpose of building up God, but to tear it down. Against the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem. In the days of Artaxerxes, wrote Bishamam, Mithradam. Now look at God naming these people who wrote this letter. And people come up to you, you ought not to name names. God does. Cabeo. And the rest of their companions. I said, Artaxerxes, king of Persia. And the writing of the letter was written in the Syrian tongue and interpreted in the Syrian tongue. Rumim, Rehim, the counselor, or chancellor, first time that word shows up. And Shimshaya, the scribe, wrote a letter against Jerusalem to Artaxerxes, the king, in this sort. Then wrote Rehim, the chancellor and Shimshiah described, and the rest of the companions, the Denonites, the Aperstapsites, the Tarophites, the Aperstites, the Archartites, the Babylonians, that's the first time that word shows up. You know what happens to the Babylonians if the Jews leave? They leave money. Their finances are going to, we won't have Jews to buy our stuff no more. The Sandistites, the Neophytes, and the Elamites. And the rest of the nations, whom, nations, people against it, uh, whom the great and noble, that's the first time that word shows up, noble, Asaphor brought over and sent in the city to Samaria, and the rest of the are on this side of the river, and at such a time. Look at all the people involved against the work. When you get in a public ministry, you're not going to offend one person. You're going to offend many people. You're going to upset people. You're going to upset the city. You're going to upset the people of the city. You're going to upset churches. You're going to upset the pastors of those churches. You're going to set off a firestorm. Because people are going to go back to their pastors and say, There is a person on the street screaming the name of Jesus. And they'll make some kind of excuse. And then the question is, why don't we do that? That guy said, in the Bible, preach the gospel. How come we don't do that? And that makes that church look bad. It makes that pastor look bad. And then when you get to city and you go in there, okay, we stopped them. Then the next week, your lawyer, and there are lawyers to protect the public ministry, has said, hey, he can do that. Now they're frustrated because they couldn't shut you up. Now the people are frustrated because you're coming back week after week after week. And they'll try whatever they can do, but they're not going to stop you from preaching to God. And here comes a letter. And God's going to record the letter through the Holy Spirit. This is the copy of the letter that they sent unto him. So there are copies of letters. Here it is. Not the original. And it's not the original manuscript. Even unto our Xerxes the king. So here it is. By servants, the men on this side of the, the river which would be east, west of the river, and at such time. Be it known unto the king that the Jews which came up 
from thee, Babylon, to us that come into the land, are come unto Jerusalem, building the rebellious and bad city. Now, is that what they're doing? No, they're building the temple. Nehemiah will build the city. So already they're, they're, they're lying. They want to spook the king say, hey, you know, you sent them over here for the temple, but they're building that city. No, they're not. That don't, the, the temple will be built, and then Nehemiah will come and build the city. So they're lying. So they will lie against you. They will try every lie under the sun to stop the gospel and the, the people of God. And that's what I said, rebellious and bad city. <laughs> that's a word today when you say bad means good. Well, didn't call evil good and good evil. Bad, according to the Bible, means even the enemies. That's a bad city over there. They're wicked. They're vile. Rebellious. Not good. These are the enemy. And have set up the walls. They haven't. They're up and joined the foundation. No, they haven't. Be it known now unto the king that if this city, it's not about the city, be built, and the walls set up again, then will they not pay toll. That's the first time that word shows up, toll. Tribute, that's money given to another nation to pay. A custom, it's kind of a tax. And shall, and so, yeah, and so thou shalt in damage, that's the only time that word shows up. The revenue, that's the first time that word shows up, of the king. Well, you see, king, they're building this city. No, they're not. And when they build this city, which they're not doing, Nehemiah hasn't even thought about it yet. We're looking at Ezra. No Nehemiah. The temple is being built. It's been established by the King Cyrus. Well, they're not going to pay you. They're not going to give you no money. And that's not how the Jews are. They were obedient. When Moses brought them through the through the wilderness, they came to Moab. They came, hey, we'll pay you for your water. If our, if our cows, our cattle eats in your grass, we'll pay it. So they are just outright lying. And don't be surprised. Do not marvel when you are in a public ministry and you're brought before the magistrates of whatever to be involved. Don't be surprised the people against you are going to lie about you. That's why we videotape all our public evangelism. So we will have a video record and audio record so if they ever call us upon it. And don't be surprised and don't you do it. When that cop, we had only one cop not do this. But other, you know, turn that thing off. No, we're not turning it off. That's our legal representation. We're not going to dare turn that off. So don't be surprised they lie against you. Don't be surprised if other Christians will lie against you too. Now, because we have maintenance, that's the first time that word shows up, from the king's palace. The king is paying these people. He's maintaining their area, their roads, whatever needs to be done. And it was not meet for us to see the king's dishonor. Dishonor is the first time it shows up. They don't care about the king. Oh, king, we're just so worried about you and your revenue. No, you're not. You want the Jews to be dead. You want the Jews to be gone. You want their land. And as any public ministry, you know what they want? They want you to leave them alone. Though the Bible says go in all the world and preach the gospel. Therefore, that's the first time that shows up. The king with lies. You certify the king with lies. That search may be made in the book of the records. That's the first time that word shows up. Of thy father. I want you to go to the hall of records. I want you to go to city hall. I want you to go downstairs. I want you to pull out the records. And see if Cyrus really gave them permission. I want you to go to the records. I want you to see that this city, Jerusalem, has been this, this troubled city. The search be made in the books of the records of the fathers, so shalt thou find in the book of the records and know that this city is a rebellious city and hurtful. That's the only time that word shows up. Unto kings and provinces, and that they have moved sedition. That's the first time that word shows up. 
with the saying of old time, for which cause was this city destroyed? No, this city was destroyed because they went against God and turned their back on God and served other gods and this would not listen to God and forsook God. Now, as far as being rebellious, yes, it was. It was a city that served God and not God. It's a city and a people that destroyed other nations as God gave them the victory. And there were times when we closed Second Chronicles that they were supposed to give Egypt money. They did it. They were supposed to give Nebuchadnezzar money. They did. Yeah, those are true. But so much lies. We certified the king that if this city be built it again, it's not the city, and the walls thereof set up, by the means thou shalt have no portion on this side of the river. It's the temple, not the city. All right, here comes the king's response. Then sent the king an answer unto Rehum, the chancellor, to Shimshai, the scribe, and to the rest of their companions that dwell in Samaria, that's north, and unto the rest beyond the river, peace, at such a time. The letter which he sent unto us has been plainly read before me, what we just read, verses 11 to 16. And I commanded the search has been made, and it is found that this city of old time has made insurrection. That's the first time that showed up. And that is a rising against civil or political party. And that is 100% true. By God, of God, for God. God said, go in there and wipe them out. That's true against king, and that rebellion and sedition have been made therein, thanks to the kings that did not do right. The king's correct. But the kings that did do right, there have been many, excuse me, there have been mighty kings also over Jerusalem. David, Solomon, Hezekiah, which have ruled over all countries beyond the river. David and Solomon especially. That's where their reign went all the way to the Euphrates. And toll and tribute and custom was paid, that's the first time that word shows up, onto them. You guys said they won't pay toll, they won't pay tribute, won't pay custom. But there's been recorded that toll, custom, and tribute has been paid to Jerusalem. True. Recorded throughout the Bible. Give ye now commandment to cause these men to cease, tell them to stop, and that the city be not built. It's not the city. Now, watch, you need to underline this, highlight this. You need to put big neon light on this until another commandment shall be given from me. Because there will be another commandment coming up. And the, the, the decree will be, yes, we found the paperwork of Cyrus. You don't stop him, and we're going to pay him. This little expression, until another commandment shall be given from me, is God telling them, P.S. You're not going to stop. Now this statement here, under a new, under a, a commandment shall be given from me, if that was not in there, those Jews could not build and would never be be able to do the temple and the building for Nehemiah. The same thing that applies in the law applies what Paul wrote to us in Romans 13. You're going to obey the powers that be. Israel is in Jerusalem building that temple because Cyrus said to do it. That is their building permit. And you obey the powers today. We're going to do whatever, you know, despite what the government tells us to do. You're wrong. You're wrong. Unless God tells you otherwise. When they told uh, John and Peter, don't you preach the name of Jesus, Peter said, we ought to play, obey God more than man. Paul says when they say pay taxes, you ought to pay taxes. Joseph, under the authority of the Jewish government, Rome told him, go to Bethlehem 
and pay his taxes, and that's exactly what he did. And he went and counted the population of him and his wife and then a newborn baby to be the Savior. You know, somewhere in the Roman rolls, there's a recording of Joseph and Mary having a baby called a birth certificate, which if anybody could find that, they would love to find that. So the law is don't stop. Now watch this. Take heed now that ye failed not to do this. You make them stop. Why should the damage, that's the first time that word showed up, grow to the hurt of the king? We let them build that city. They're not building the city. Man, they're going to build more. Then they're going to build more cities. They're going to build more. And then they're going to fight us. And they're going, we're going to lose. That's the same threat they had in Exodus 1. They're going to overpower us. Everybody is a fear of Israel. Because Israel has the mighty God. Israel, they have God said, I will curse them that curse you. And now it may not happen right away. But it still falls short. America's going that way right now with that one woman in government. This terrifying and just throwing Israel to the wolves. Better be careful. But we're not done. Now when the copy of the King Artaxerxes letter, not the original, was read before Rahum and Shimei had described, and their companion, okay, they got the king's word, they went up in haste to Jerusalem. All right, hallelujah. Unto the Jews and made them to cease by force and by power, police action. They went in there with weapons. They went in there with force and said, knock it off, stop it. And probably took the tools, broke the tools, and maybe hurt some of the Jews and probably destroyed some stuff. They were violent toward the Jews to make them stop. They showed that they meant business. Then ceased the work of the house of God, not the city, which is in Jerusalem. So it ceased unto the second year of the reign of Darius, the king of Persia. And that's how we close off this chapter.